Hello and welcome. I'm Elizabeth, a librarian with the San Jose Public Library, and today we're going to be doing an engineering challenge. We're going to be making some little boats, and we're going to see whether they float or sink. So what are you going to need for today's challenge? Well, you'll need a container with water. Now this can be a pan from your kitchen or a plastic storage bin. I'm going to use this small plastic storage bin I've got right here. You'll also need some aluminum or tin foil, some scissors, and some weights, small heavy things to test how much weight our boats will hold. I found some hexagonal nuts as well as some pennies, but anything that you can find around the house that you don't mind getting wet will work as long as it's small and heavy. And speaking of getting wet, because we're going to be doing water, you may want to do this challenge outside or in the kitchen or bathroom just so that it's a little bit easier to clean up. So what makes something float and what makes it sink? Well, if you've played around in the pool or in the bathtub, you'll have probably noticed that things that are light tend to float and things that are heavy tend to sink. So I've got this small little styrofoam ball here. It's very, very light and if I put it on the water, it floats right up there on the top. But it's not all about weight because I also have this little paper clip shaped like a flower and although it's not any heavier than the styrofoam ball if I put it in it's going to sink right to the bottom and that's because what floats and sinks doesn't have to do with weight as much as it has to do with density so things that are large and light have low density and things that are small and heavy have high density and so for example, our nut here will have a very high density because it's so small and so heavy. So anything that has a high density will sink to the bottom and anything that has low density will float here on the top of the water. And sometimes things can fool you. For example, I have two bouncy balls here that look like they're about the same material, although they're different sizes. They both bounce, they're both squishy, and if I put them into the water, the small one will sink right to the bottom and the large one will bounce on the bottom, but will come back up and float just underneath the top of the water. And that's because even though they seem to be the same material, these bouncy balls actually have different density. This is a fun experiment that you can do. Ask an adult first, but you can gather some things from around the house. Make a guess first, see what you think will float and will sink, and then test it out and find out if your guesses were right. But today, we're going to be using something different to talk about floating and sinking, and that is displacement. So this nut that sank right to the bottom before, if I put a little container into the water, I can see that it floats right up here on top of the water. And if I push down very carefully, it will kind of push back on my finger so I can feel it pushing back on me. So if I put one of these nuts that sank right to the bottom earlier into this container, the water that the container is pushing out of the way is pushing back on the container. This is something called displacement. And we're going to use displacement when we make our boats today. So I can put in not just one nut, but three nuts, five, eight, and in fact, ten. 10 times the weight that sank right to the bottom before, but this cup is holding them up because of displacement. As the weight of the nuts pushes down on the boat and it pushes the water out of the way, the water pushes back on it. Now you can see my boat is sitting much lower in the water, so we're going to want to watch out for that when we're making our boats. High sides will help keep your boat, will help keep water from coming into your boat even if it sits low down into the water. So, we're going to make our boats out of tin foil. Now, I like to cut all of my tin foil to the same measurement, so 7 inches by 10 inches. You can use any measurement you like. And the reason I like to have all of my tin foil the exact same size is that means I can try different boat shapes and different boat types using the same amount of material and see if there's a difference in how much weight it will hold up. So I'm going to start first by making a flat bottom boat. I'm going to fold up the sides here and fold up the other side here. And then at the end, I'm kind of going to fold it up and then I'm going to tuck it in a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing at this end. And that will help keep my boat 
nice and flat bottom there. Now I'm just going to put in 20 pennies today because I don't want to uh, make it sink just yet. I just want to see if I can make each of my boats hold up 20 pennies. So that's 5 pennies and I've got 10 pennies and 15 pennies and 20 pennies. So my little flat bottom boat holds up 20 pennies no problem. Let me try a different size of boat or a different shape of boat. So I'm going to take another sheet of tin foil, again the same exact size, and this time I'm going to make a more canoe type boat. So I'm going to fold it in half here, and I'm going to make a very quick and dirty canoe. I'm just going to sort of squinch it up on one end, and squinch it up on the other end. I kind of call this boat, it looks a little bit like a banana to me, so I sometimes call it a banana boat. And I've got a little canoe in the middle here. Now, you'll notice that the bottom of the canoe is much smaller, but the sides of the canoe are much higher. So, I'm going to put in my 20 pennies again and see if it will hold up my 20 pennies. Let's see, 5, 10, 15, and 20. Yeah, it held up my 20 pennies with no problem. So I want to challenge you guys to make your own kinds of boats, test them out, share your creations, see what type of boat designs that you can come up with, and let me know how much weight your boats can hold up. Now, if you're interested in engineering and learning more about science and science experiments, I'm going to link some resources down below. The library has some great electronic resources that are available free online with your library card, and there are also some other fantastic resources out there on the web from science museums, educators, and more. So I'll link some fun stuff down below. Check it out.